How you doing everybody? Welcome to the video. Today I've got something kind of special for you. Um, I had a chance to head over to Save on Tackle for a seminar. And if you have never been to one of those seminars that Save on Tackle has, I really suggest them. I really, I, I really enjoy them. They're over there in Santa Fe Springs. They're a really cool tackle shop. They have a lot of uh, um, knowledgeable people there. But they bring in like experts and people from different areas and different genres and they bring them in they talk about um, really cool subjects this time was about bass fishing and it includes spotties too so that's why another reason why I really enjoyed it but uh, they were talking about pre-spawn bass fishing and getting out there and trying different baits and and what they use and what's you know what's really uh, working well and they didn't just cover the baits themselves they also covered tackle and gear and um, all the different aspects of it. I thought it was really informative. Um, so um, I did record it all. Um, the, the host today was, I think his name was Toai or something like that, Toai Garcia. I had a hard time hearing him. Um, apologies ahead of time for the camera shakes and moving around and, and listening. It was really hard to, to record some of these seminars, but um, hopefully I caught um, some stuff and hopefully you guys can, can learn about bass fishing. Uh, from the guy and um, another guy there again I miss his name but you can follow him on Instagram as Poe J Poe and he's another spotted bay bass fisherman he does a real good job um, and he catches these huge fish with his setups and he talks about how to catch these spotties um, Really cool, informative video. Really cool, informative guys talking about um, the stuff that we love. Hopefully, you find it informative. Let me know what you think about the video down below in the comments. It's probably going to be long. The seminar itself was about an hour. Um, I'm looking forward to um, going to, to Fred Hall and doing some more of these seminar videos as well for everybody so you guys can uh, um, learn as much as I am um, by watching the videos. and. You don't have to go and sit in the sun or anything. So without further ado, take care all. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a like, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.
fishing is beautiful. It doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are, or I guess the same thing, your gender, your religion, your political status. It doesn't, none of that matters. All that matters is that we like to go and target these fish, whether it be green bass, tuna, some pelagics, bluegill, catfish. We all share one thing in common, and that's we love fishing. So we have to do what we have to do to keep this positive vibe going. I do things, uh, I run a page called Fish All Brand, and essentially what I do is host, host monthly contests and giveaways to help promote positivity in the industry. I like to give it that competitive spirit with these contests. And, and I'm hoping that people will take what I'm doing and then give a little bit back to the community and spread that positivity. So let's get into this seminar here. Thank you guys for coming on down. Uh, this is my boat. It used to be a pretty clean boat. When I decided to make these rods, I dumped it in salt. And as you can tell, the trailer didn't like it. The boat didn't like it. But the results are pretty good. The rods, the rods that we came out with, or the I rod time on the coastals. Can I get a show of hands? Anybody here fish I rod? <coughs> All right, we'll give you guys an extra raffle tickets. <laughs> I like these rods, they're pretty consistent. I fish ducket, dobbins, I uh, fish blues when they came out with their first series. Uh, I fish Phoenix, a lot of Shimano and G Lewis rods, and these have been the most consistent for me. And the guy is a one man show, just one guy that runs the company. He allowed me to make this. That dude right there is the dude I was talking about. His name is Jeremy Cole. He'll come out and talk about how he slays spotted big bass later. But, uh, do you guys fish local park lakes? What's your favorite park lake? Just throw it out. Yorba Regional. Yorba? Yeah. Leg lake. lake. That's a great one. You buy fish like El Dorado, Cerritos, Ralph, Laguna. A little bit of everything. All right. So this time of the year, when I decide I want to go out fishing, the mindset that I have is to cover water. These fish are getting out of their groove. They're no longer in this lethargic state. They're transitioning, whether it just be them cruising, looking for that spot. They're looking for Beverly Hills. You know, they're trying to find equity. And in between them swimming, that's when you can kind of catch them. So how do I target them? I like to start off fast. You guys know how to fish a crankbait? Crankbait is a great way to go. Uh, you can cover water really fast. You can find the structure, but it's not just casting or retrieving. It's trying to find why they're biting. Crankbait allows you to do that. If you're swimming it, you get hung up in grass, you pop it off and you get bit, then that allows you to, okay, and they're in their grass. Or maybe they want that stop pause or that erratic. Crankbait is a really good way to do it. I personally throw it on a graphite rod I rod makes a uh, crank launcher junior, which is a great crankbait rod, but for sensitive sensitivity purposes, I like the graphite rod. This is an I rod 702. Uh, it's the last time I did this with Benny Florentino, I snapped a rod. But here's your action right there. Graphite rod allows you to pretty much feel the bite. I like it because it allows you to feel, feel the grass and the muck. So you retrieve it. All of a sudden, it'll get really heavy. You know you're like snack on algae or grass. The next thing I like to throw, kind of moving really fast here, is the crankbait. I mean, uh, the jerkbait. This is the Mega Bass 110. Look, I was never one of those guys to get hyped up on a bait, but this Mega Bass 110 is probably the best jerkbait out there, period. They come in a variety of different colors. They're pretty expensive. They have a weight transferring system so you can get that bomb cast if need be. Uh, it's, it doesn't have that like crazy rattle, but it has a deeper knock. I like that. It's more aggressive. And I found that it, it actually uh, gets a bit a lot better. <laughs> Anyone tell me when the when was the last full moon? Right now. Last night. My oh, man. <laughs> Got you covered. Come up here, brother. When's the next new move? When's the next new move? 
when's the new moon? And so the, there's your full moon, there's new moon, where essentially there's no moon out there. What day is that? It's the 23rd. All right? Why ask about the moon? Who looks at moon phases and determining what you're going to throw the next day? See, when I go bass fishing, I don't care if I have nice reels, nice bait, boat, whatever. What I fell in love with most about bass fishing is the process. I like rigging my stuff up the day before. If you fall in love with the process, you're going to fall in love with the, the results, period. You know? If I'm going to go fish a place, I'm looking at a bunch of things here. I'm looking at moon cycle. I'm looking at weather. I have a thermometer with me so I can check water temperature. I look at uh, water clarity. And then all that determines what I'm going to throw. Now, if I go to, like, say, Lake Lake, you mentioned earlier, right? The middle lake is fighting, by the way. If, if you guys didn't already know that. Uh, if I go to Lake Lake and I look at the water temperature with my thermometer I look at the, the clarity and then I know that we're gonna be roughly around 70 80 degrees water temperature right now is about 61 these fish are starting to transition if you were me and you gathered all that intel what are you throwing spinner baits spinner baits a good one reaction baits what you say jerk bait jerk bait jerk baits a real good one because you can fish fast you can fish slow I like to I like to throw more of a more aggressive uh, aggressive approach, and that's going to be the chatterbait mm. because mm. that water that water is not like super clear right now, and I'm fishing shallower because that's based on what I've seen. The fish are, are kind of transitioning route right now, so they're they're moving along the banks. So I like to fish a chatterbait. These are my favorite chatterbaits here. They're the jackhammers. They're pretty expensive, but they come with like a two X hook. The skirt is tied a lot better, and that blade puts off a lot of vibration. You guys know why I like to throw a chatterbait this time of the year with everything I told you guys? It splashes around. That's makes, him, makes him come get it. Okay. The fish are starting to move up on Okay. They're trying to the water. They're trying to fatten up. Pre-spawn. Okay, I throw the chatterbait because it puts off a lot of vibration. The water is not the clean clearest. Vibration, shadow, that's why I pick a dark bait or either a bright natural bait. I won't go straight green pumpkin. But um, it all varies on trailer too. I like the Zakos by Gary Yamamoto. But uh, let's see. You're throwing a chatter bait. I like to make this as interactive as possible. You're starting to get short bit. What are you throwing next? like that. What you got? I've never put a stinger on a chatterbait, but I'm going to try it. Come check this out. Grab one. <laughs> hey, this is what I like to see right here, dude. Real talk. I like to see the youth come out and play. If I'm throwing a chatterbait and I'm covering water, I'm getting short bit. What that tells me is that these fish are coming up and they're either swiping at it or picking at it. So that tells me to slow down. But if you're getting bit, understand why you're getting bit right there. Is there a bend? You know, is there something different? So when you're able to, to look at all that, you're start, you're able to build a pattern. I slow it down. This is probably my favorite bait out there in general. This is a Deeks jig. Uh, we're one of the only few people to have them. This, this bait, I rig it kind of funky. But you see, I kind of bottom out the bottom, but when it's head, it just sticks out like that, naturally, you know? I put a Z-Man trailer on there because they float, so the appendages sit out there. But if I'm fishing fast and I'm getting short bit, I need to slow it down. The jig is probably the best bait to get bit by a bigger fish other than the swim bait. But I'll get into the swim baits. Has anybody caught a donkey on a jig? No one's caught a big one on a jig? All right, I'll tell you a good story about this. Uh, our waters are pressured, all right? Logically, when our waters are pressured and you're not getting bit, what do you what do you do as an angler to try to get bit? Finesse. The finesse. Slow. Here you go, 
brother. Nice. Thank you. The finesse your approach. You dug down your line, right? But then I gained so much confidence on fishing oh, lighter lines, I always fish light line. To include going night fishing on 10, 12 pounds. I'm the guy that used to throw a huggy on 12 pounds. <coughs> this guy right here, we go fishing. He's Mr. Cool Guy. He was throwing 15. I'm like, you're not gonna get bit. He threw a jig in grass pockets and he stuck with a seven. Yeah, it made me reevaluate my whole life. I got a Costco membership and everything for some reason. It just changed my whole outlook in general. But yeah, no. And it was nighttime, so it's like, all right, whatever, I'll, I'll check it out. All right, so we're fishing Leg Lake here. We start out fast, and we start getting bit on the jig. At that point, you just go to the store, you buy you a beer and call it a win. But if you guys were trying to target some of the bigger fish and you know they're biting, That's when you throw out the big bait. All right, so there's there's two reasons why I like the big bait. The one, obviously, big baits catch big fish. We all know it. Now everybody knows how to go about it and I'll talk about it. The big bait is a great way to see where the fish are at. I fished a club tournament, I threw the big bait because we couldn't get bit. We couldn't find the fish, I was at the state. I threw the big bait right behind me my buddy was throwing a thin cinco. we drew the fish out he caught the fish on four pound thin cinco. a big bait like this 262 by uh, uh it's i slide 262 by mega bass it's a glide bait you can effectively cover water and see where these fish live now if you're lucky enough to get bit that's another thing who here throws big baits that's not a lot of people you guys ever want to get into big baits? Here's my biggest tip I can give you about big baits. If you're serious about throwing a big bait to catch a big fish, buy one bait. Buy one bait. Set a goal of five to 10 fish. You're not allowed to buy any other swim baits until you catch five to 10 fish, whatever your goal is. Because I guarantee you what's gonna happen is you're gonna buy a bait, you're not gonna get a bit, you're not gonna get bit a couple of times you're gonna buy another swim bait, and then you're gonna buy another swim bait. The next thing you know, you're gonna be like boss man in there with a, with a whole wall full of swim baits and no fish in it. No fish caught on it, either one of them. The first swim bait that I bought, and I got serious with it, was the HUD. It's an eight inch HUD. Jeez. I set a goal of 10 fish. It took me three seasons to catch the 10 fish, but I caught 10 fish. I caught fish in the winter, they go into spring, and then into summer. And there's big fish in the mix. But after those 10 fish, I knew how to fish the HUD. I had so much confidence in it. And then when I decided to buy another swim bait, I bought a swim bait that added to my arsenal. It complemented my game plan. I knew what this bait could do, I knew what it can't do. So then I bought a glide bait, I bought the 250. I set a goal of 10 fish. I knew what this bait could do, I knew what this bait could do, and what it couldn't do was pretty much give me some big fish on top water, so then I bought a punker. Then I start adding to my arsenal there. I start dumbing it down. I start going with weight baits. I move into the rat. Then I went into a bait that I can cover water on the bottom more effectively. I went into the mag. Then I start getting into custom baits. You know, I felt confident that I can throw any glide bait and get bit. So I start going into these custom baits or these uh, more hyped up baits like the Hinkle Trouts and, and so forth. But now I can pick up any swim bait and I'm confident enough to, to catch fish on all of them. That's my advice on swim bait fishing there, guys. This is the HUD. All right, pre-spawn season. How are you fishing it? Very slow on the bottom, bouncing off rocks. Okay, and why is that? This is want to be kind of lethargic, kind of like lost little fish there, kind of closing around. Intermediate, slow, change it up, speed up, slow, change it up, speed up, try to get a reaction. I like that. I like both answers, by the way. I, I, fish it, uh, I fish it fast. I cover water. This is a time where I'm trying to, it's, 
it's the quantity of cast, my theory, that's gonna go into the quantity of fish that's gonna see this bait. I like to fish it really fast this time of year. When I start out winter, I, I listen to, to Matt Newman, who runs IROD. He is a part of Big Bait Posse. I actually went to a seminar up in Sacramento and he was given a seminar there. He talked about casting this bait out and going like this. And I did that for winter. And then I also did that for pre-spawn. I caught two fish in a pre-spawn. I caught a 10-7 on a HUD because I made a cast out and it felt like I was building up algae. So then I snap snap and I was burning it back. Dead cast, right? I get slammed, boom, oh, set the hook, brung her in. I was scared to touch her. Because it, it freaked me out, you know? I'm like burning a bait in, it's right here. She came out of nowhere, hit it, it was like, oh man, you know? Like the first time I had my experience with a girl. I was, just dumbfounded. <laughs> she ate the hood. I like to fish it fast. <clears throat> All right. Um, if you wanted to modify this bait to increase, increase your hookup ratio, what are you, what are you doing? You gotta throw it up. You gotta throw it up. Say it out loud. Stinger hook. Stinger hook. What is that rig called? Right here. Check it out. Butch Brown. Uh, he's actually gonna, he just did a podcast with Nick from Crassy Crank. But he's gonna talk about how he start playing with the HUD. But the Butch Brown rig, that's the way I like to rig my hoods. Uh, with the exception of the 10 inch HUD, I do put that trailer back there, that stinger. And you guys can see that. Jeez. Do that uh, little twist or whatever they call it. Put a trouble in the back. This is a 10 inch HUD. Uh, I haven't got bit on it yet. But I, this is the bait that I've been throwing at night. Trying to, my goal is to catch 10 fish on this one bait. Yeah, it's not, it hasn't been working out for me. I don't know what it is. They just, this year it's been kind of weird for me, but yeah, I, I love this bait. Do you buy a fish a 10 inch hut? I would say I would give it away, but I can't get my goal on it, so I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> All right, if you're going to get into swim bait fishing, you got to have the right gear. Swim bait fishing is like bluefin fishing. If you're not willing to pay, you're, if you're not going to pay, don't play. I'd rather not catch a swim bait fish than hook a swim bait fish and then lose it. If you're not willing to pay, don't play. You'll end up snapping off a, a glide bait, you know, because you use cheap line and now you got this giant with trebles and a big old 10 ounce bait in their mouth. You might snap your rod. You know, I, I've seen people like duct tape their they're old like uh this is the dumbest thing i've ever seen this guy he wanted to get in swim bait fishing he put like one of those old pen reels with 30 pound and he's chucking big bait but he didn't know that reel only had like 12 15 pounds of drag and it was so old he never serviced it, it probably only had like eight pounds of drag so then he thumbed it but it didn't fit in the reel seat so he used duct tape the reel came loose went and knocked off two of his two of his guides snapped his rod so half his rod and that reel went in the water and then we watched his reel get taken off. So now there's a fish. <laughs> fish fishing. <laughs> there's a rocker fish because that had all these like piercings and <laughs> two chains, like real yeah. if you ain't willing to pay, don't play. Now iRod makes a Bailey swim and a Bailey swim mag and a junior swim. The Bailey Swim, I think, is probably one of the better swim bait rods out there because it's not expensive. You can buy two of them for the price of one from a competitive brand, lifetime warranty, and it's designed and developed by two like the hardcore swim bait guys, Matt Newman and Paul Bailey. I fish with Paul Bailey a couple times as a professional guide up there at Clear Lake. The dude's mindset completely blows me blows me away continuously. All right. Now I'm going to get into what I don't like to talk about. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even, he doesn't even want to be talked about. <laughs> I didn't bring one, but uh, I thought I had one inside the, the bowl, but I didn't. Finesse. It is what it is. You know, we're getting, you're going to have spawn. I don't like talking about spawn because a lot of people go on dead fish. I say leave the fish alone. 
I don't like the big tournaments out there because three months out of the year it's all sight fishing. You get guys with water guns and they're like spraying the surface to, to make it seem like there's a, a ball of shad coming through. They get the, the fish all fired up because it makes it seem like ducks are coming through. Our bluegill are feeding on shad. So they're, they're with their water guns. They'll come out and, and throw baits at the, you know, they just leave them alone yeah, if you can. There's plenty of fish to be caught outside of, of that fish. There's the transitional fish. There's people, the, the fish that are moving up, the next one's in line. They're still big and healthy, you know. They're ready to be caught. Target those fish. But when it gets outside of the spawn season, you start getting into summer. It's hot. The water temperature is 67 plus, 68. Then it goes into like 70. We all, we all know the drop shot, right? There's a lot of things I like to do for nests. Drop shot is one. I would say that there's more money being made off drop shot competitively than any other application or style of fishing out there. Would you guys disagree with me? Clear Lake is known for 20 pound tests, 25 pound tests. This past three years, there's been more people winning on a drop shot rig than any other rig out there. And I talk to Paul all the time, he tells me, Oh, we lost the old man. Old man only throws a drop shot because his shoulders are pretty bad. We we'll sit there and make one cast and just sit there and just dead to it. We deck stick our little jig jiggle here. Argues with his old lady. He's like, oh, I'm bit, babe. I'll call you back. And then, you know. <laughs> there's a bait that I do like to throw when it gets really tough. Yeah, I call it the do-nothing bait. And all the do-nothing bait is, you know, I'll tell you how I approach it. If I'm starting out, I start off with a drop shot. One, I can cast further. Maybe I can get into the middle of the pond or middle of the park lake, and then I can work it back. I have a longer cast, so therefore I can, I have a longer presentation back, right? But they're not biting. I take off this tag and I pretty much cut it, and now I have just the hook. with just that one bait, casting into 20 feet of water and doing nothing. Talking a lot of crap about somebody I don't like probably, or having a beer or something, but I'm essentially doing nothing. This bait just fluttering down, what is it, what am I trying to emulate here? Was that? It's a worm. Dead fish. Dead, worm. dead fish. Trash. So in the summertime, why are you emulating dead fish? It's like of oxygen. That's one. The shad start dying. Or the largies start getting really aggressive and they're targeting and, and pushing up the shad into bait balls and they're going and swiping at them. Guess who's on the bottom chilling just scavenging? Big catfish. I've too big. But hey, it works. No, no, it's, it's cool, man. Here you go, brother. Sorry, I didn't mean to troll you. <laughs> Alright, so they don't want that dying. I like to throw an underspin by pool baits or that owner flashy. And you notice that a lot of these baits that I'm talking about is not really any different probably from what you guys are throwing. But it just goes back to just doing things differently. I don't really care if I get bit or not. I care if I was able to figure them out that day. You know, whether it be one fish or ten fish. You know, I like the, the whole going out there to hunt. I like I like saying, all right, I looked at everything and I threw this one bait and I got bit on the first cast. I'll put my boat back on the truck and go get drunk at home because I knew I was right. But then you're not right and you're trying to figure out why you're not right. So then you're thick. You're taking through all this. You throw your whole tackle box at them. They humble you, man. They, they really do. That's why I love bass fishing because these fish will humble you. You think you know everything and all of a sudden you don't know nothing. Like these fish shut you up really quick. I'm gonna slow it down here, kind of open the floor to some questions before I move on. Did you guys have any questions about anything thus far? 
you were talking about the full moon cycle. I hear some debates between the different people about when the time is to fish on a full moon, saying the fish feed all night long under a full moon, so all the right. morning's no good, etc. All right, so moon phase. He's asking, pretty much he asked me what like what I throw or, yeah, what, or what, my, what your opinion is and what food. you see that's working. Good question, brother. It's an LV500. Full moon, I'm throwing a liquid crank bait. But, thank you. Alright, let's talk about the moon really quick. By show of hands, for our local ponds, park lakes primarily, do you think it's either a, a, a full moon or a new moon that is better? So, full moon, raise your hand. New moon, raise your hand. Alright. Why the new moon? Come on, easy. John, somebody throw out it. Why the new moon? Brighter? First light. It's the first full light. For the new moon, there's essentially not really any moon out there. The full moon, that's when there's all the light. We'll just keep it simple like that. If somebody can wow me with an answer, I'll give you a bull shad. Like a $65 bait. That that could be. I'm not no moon guy. They, there's a lot of talk. I know that plays a huge factor into like salt water and tidal movement and stuff like that and current. But in freshwater park lakes specifically, why do you like each moon? Wow. I just starving in the morning for local park lakes I do not like to fish the full moon for local park lakes I don't really like to fish for the full moon and fish the full moon I do know if I am gonna go out I might have a chance at cracking a big one now explain it this is my whole thought process with the moon cycle our waters are naturally clear right uh, so now you're fishing at night these fish are pressured all day, every day. Now all of a sudden there's a full moon. Little do you know, but that full moon illuminating on the water is clear as day to them. So what's the odds? It's been pressured all day. What's the odds of you going out there throwing the same thing they're throwing all day and getting bit at night? Now, do you get bit at night? Absolutely. Every, I mean, the fish have to feed. I found that on new, new moons, when there's no light, that's when you can give a more stealthier approach, and therefore I like the new moon better to go fishing at night. You guys kind of kind of see that. But I will tell you guys this: on a full moon, that morning of for the next two three days is fire. Because when that moon starts to settle and that sun's coming in, it's essentially dark. That's when the big fish go out there and actually ambush. That's when they actually feed, I think. Now, if you guys don't agree with me, I'm just trying to spread my logic to you guys. When I am going targeting bigger fish on big baits, I like the full moon at night because they can see a bigger bait at night. And I know no one else is throwing it at night. That's the reason why I like full moon for swim baits. I like new moon for total fishing in general. Does that kind of make sense? I appreciate your question, brother. Get another one. All right. Yeah. Fill that tackle box, man. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, this is interactive. Yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, I could sit here and talk all day about rods, rows, and baits, but it'd be boring. Yeah, I, I like the questions. I like answering questions. If I can kind of like sway your opinion to something or, or better help you understand what I like to do, it's cool. So, anybody else have any questions? Angel, and I'll get to you, brother. Uh -huh. Yesterday I was fishing and uh, I was able to locate what I think were bass and I saw a big fish come out of the water. A little bit farther and where I struggled is the second day where I've seen big fish come out of the water. I'm like, what do you throw in that situation? Cool. So what he's saying is that he went and fished leg? No. Oh, you're not that. trying to burn your spot? All right, cool. <laughs> he ain't willing to share, and I don't care. He's saying that he saw a bait, he saw a bait getting busted on pretty much, but it was kind of far. What do you throw? 
hey man, that LV500, that red eye shad, that lipless crankbait, free spawn, it's a fire bait. One, you can get out there. You know, it's got knockers, it's got a little weight transfer system in it. It's, it's compact. You can cast it on a medium heavy rod, a medium action rod, a crankbait rod. But I'd probably throw a lipless crankbait. If I saw a shad getting busted on, I'm firing out there. I'm either yo-yoing it, ripping it real fast. So please, crankbait, don't get loose. I'll fire the cast, right? I rip it and then let it sink. Rip it, let it sink. If I'm not getting bit, I'll fire it out again and just burn it back and kill it. Burn it back and kill it. The fish are panicking right now. What's up? I use a large cast master when yeah. I see that. That's old school. I mean, no one throws cast masters for bass anymore, I'll tell you that much. I don't know if people think it's like a, a, a goober way of fishing. I don't like people who, who think if you're throwing a certain bait, you're cooler than other people. I think those are lame, uh, especially swim bait guys. But a cast master is a great way to catch them because one, you're using silver, I take it, or gold yeah, in the silver, morning. Yeah, silver. Yeah, and they work good for stripers when they're boiling too. Well, we know about the aqueduct striper. Uh, Here you go, brother. Throw this next time you go out. <laughs> what you have, brother? So how do you know when the free spawn fight starts? Is it just off right. the weather? Let me see yeah. it. Yeah, so, let me see it. So on like big lakes and park lakes, uh, you have to look at water temperature. You have to really follow water temperature.